you? I'm looking at you. How are you feeling after um, 30, 60, 40, whatever days it is under Abbott? It's bad, isn't it? Because I thought I really want to write jokes about Tony Abbott, but I can't. Um, he can, though. He's full of them. He published a book called Battle Lines. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you excerpts from Battle Lines by Tony Abbott. Now, bear with me, I could only access a few pages for free on Google. I wasn't going to pay for that shit. So, okay, let's start page 189. Tony Abbott. Everyone has days from hell. Oh, you're telling us. <laughs> 8th of September comes to mind. The difference between a politician's very bad day and most people's is, the wor is that the worse a politician's troubles are, the more likely they are to be on national TV. And maybe that's why he stopped broadcasting news about asylum seekers, <laughs> to soften the blow for them. My day from hell was the 31st of October 2007. The papers reported that I abused dying anti-asbestos campaigner Bernie Benton. Don't you think it's adorable that he hated media bias? I just think that's so cute. What a blast from the past. The papers have reported that I'd abused dying anti-asbestos campaigner Bernie Banton by suggesting that his protest outside my office the previous day was a political stunt. Even though I'd phoned Banton to apologise while on the way to a health policy launch in Melbourne and he had good, been good enough to acknowledge that he had been not very nice about me, I love how he had to throw that in. It's like, well, he apologised to me too. So, I spent the morning publicly saying sorry for impugning the motives of a Labor hero. God, I wish that was my day from hell. He's pretty much saying, look, the worst day of my life is that I had to say sorry to a dying guy for calling him an opportunistic cunt. <laughs> but he said sorry to me, so it's like, it's an okay day. <laughs> He's talking about the 2007 election lost here. Memories of the campaign will inevitably fade. By contrast, a reputation for being strident doesn't necessarily dissipate with time. Now, I love this line. In particular, there, were my colleague, there was my colleague's judgment that I was, in inverted commas, too Catholic. <laughs> I think they're onto something. <laughs> Too Catholic on some sensitive issues. In some ways, this was an odd perception. Hear the plea from Tony. A somewhat checkered past meant that I could not, never be sanctimonious about personal behaviour. Tony asked, how could I be judgmental about others, given my own failures to uphold the very ideals of good conduct? That's what we're all fucking asking. <laughs> and then he says, and I do love this line, I mean, there's so much gold in here. As an ambitious politician, I had never had the slightest of intention of becoming a morals campaigner. <laughs> He's doing a good job of hurting it. <laughs> Get an abortion or marry again, you're a dead cunt. But hey, I'm not a morals campaigner. Shortly after becoming health minister, though, I'd been asked to justify Medicare funding for up to 75,000 abortions every year. And then he goes on to say, it was a question that compelled an answer. <laughs> the answer of which is there are 75,000 unwanted pregnancies a year. But that wasn't good enough. So, look, that's all I've got from Abbott's um, excerpts from Battle Lines for free on the internet. Uh, of course, thank you. I do, like, as a feminist, I am very excited about, like, um, what Abbott's election means for women. 
Um, only 25 out of 26 Prime Ministers have had daughters. Um, the only Prime Minister to not have had daughters was Julia Gillard, so really, what did she know about women? Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, it is exciting times. Um, since the election of Tony Abbott, we've sort of seen a few states and territories jump to action on gay marriage, which is really wonderful, isn't it? Um, not that I'd ever get fucking married. <laughs> um, I'm not an idiot. Um, but um, it's just nice. Like, it's a nice tokenistic little thing. But I have to say, I will be bitterly disappointed because you know how they're bringing it up in the New South Wales Parliament? Apparently, there is talk that it won't pass the um, Legislative Assembly in the New South Wales Parliament, which I think is quite awkward for a place that has been long nicknamed the Bear Pit. Um, I actually accidentally turned up there once when I was pinging off my head after Mardi Gras, and I was like, oh, it's the Bear Pit, waiting for some man-on-man -man action. And it just wasn't the type of man-on-man -man that I wanted, so that was quite disappointing. I will tell you about my favourite ever Mardi... Who loves Mardi Gras? Woo! You're my people, all right. I'm from Newcastle. Yeah. yeah, that plus Mardi Gras equals epic fail, right? So Sydney people always have their shit together. They have the best floats, the Newcastle community. We get 10 people together and we're like, yeah, let's do this. Oh my God. We didn't have, like last year, we couldn't find an actual float driver, so we just randomly got an actual truckie to do our thing. <laughs> He'd never driven a float, so he was driving it like he was on the F3. <laughs> so you had everyone in their Sydney floats and they're like, could be dancing, yeah! And we're like, slow the fuck down! <laughs> Happy Mardi Gras, we're from Newcastle. <laughs> I did actually, this is quite exciting, I did lead the Mardi Gras parade once, me. I was in an ambulance, passed out, but hey, I was the first cab off the rank and I went, went, went. It was great. Um, so I do love Mardi Gras. It's great fun. Um, obviously, that will be a neat little segue into the secret that I am a lesbian. I know, I don't wear the boots for my health. Um, I, <laughs> I don't get this haircut for fun, okay? It's serious business. There's a message to be said. Um, so I'm a lesbian, um, at which stage this is so awkward. I just have to look at my arm for a second. No, that's not. That's not really, okay, I'm back. Don't worry about that. That didn't happen. That was in my head, wasn't it? Okay, so anyway, so um, and I was reading this book on um, lesbian history, as you do. And it's all about these uh, lesbian persecutions in the Middle Ages and uh, when lesbians were executed for being gay and it's all through Europe and they have a chart of how many lesbians were executed in Europe and it got down, they went through all these countries, how many there were, and then it got to Spain and only one lesbian was executed and that's like, shouldn't there at least be two? <laughs> Maybe she was wearing boots. I don't know. Because I'm like, that poor woman was killed for being a lesbian. She never even got to be lesbian. Like, that's just really mean. Um, so I do love, I do love reading history books. Uh, I also, I'm so sorry to have to keep looking at my arm. That's very unprofessional. I will tell you about this beautiful time that um, I made mulled wine. And I got the recipe from like Frankie magazine, which is like very hipster, so it's a very cool recipe. It cost me 20 bucks to buy the spices, but hey, I felt really good. Had all these people over, made this gorgeous mulled wine. Needless to say, everyone was quite tanked at mine. Then my gorgeous friend Andrew, which I have to say, he can be quite annoying sometimes, goes, let's make more mulled wine. I said, no, there's really, there's nothing left. <laughs> And he walks in the kitchen and then I walk in and I just see this bloke with like a bottle of white wine and a bottle of red wine tipping it into a plastic jug and I'm like, you need to stop. 
what you're doing. And it's like, no, it's okay, it's my one. And then he proceeds to break up a mandarin, throw it in there, puts it in the microwave for 12 minutes. Now, I was not sound of mind, so I just walked out, you know, out of sight, out of mind. This is not happening. And then I come into this steaming, bubbling death pit in this, like, jug, which he brings out tenderly to all these guests, and he says, surprise, more mild one, the smell made some people pass out. (laughs) And then my friend Sandra, who I have to say is fond of a drink, pours herself a glass of it, brings it to her nose. Uh, I want to drink that. Believe you me, I want to drink that. I I can't do it. And that is the time Andrew made mild wine. Thank you. Um, (laughs) Moving on. Um, Yes. um, uh, Did you know that performing cunnilingus, um, there's a link between performing cunnilingus and uh, mouth cancer? No, that's not funny. (laughs) This is a public health announcement. So I'm like, because I like to be, you know, I'm a health ambassador. So I've taken the initiative of printing um, photos of disgusting mouths and attaching them to my undies. (laughs) Just to like, so people can like, you know, make their own risk assessment. Has anyone here, put your hand up if you've heard of a trend called the jazzling. Three people. This really is a socialist alliance thing. <laughs> the jazzling. I'll let you guys draw in the dots on that, but basically it just involves a woman paying about $400 to get some diamond, diamond stuck onto her pubeless area. And I, like, this isn't really just a joke, but just an observation. I often think about those people and, like, after they get the process, the procedure, don't they just go home and go, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> um, it reminds me sort of of, like, Brazilians, because I'm like, I find the whole thing of a Brazilian quite interesting. Um, I, I don't get Brazilians personally, but I do want them, and people always get surprised. Because they're like, you're a feminist, isn't it about infantilising women? I don't get Brazilians because it's anti-feminist. I don't get Brazilians because I have so much hair that if I got one, it would just look like a crop circle. (laughs) So, I'm going to be useless. So, okay. um, I've got a great family. I grew up. I, I grew up with a single mum, so we were loaded. We were so rich, and uh, we had money from Centrelink, sympathetic extended family, mum's part-time job, child support. We were rolling in it, and um, and uh, I loved her house. I was a bit eccentric, and of, a, of an evening, my favourite time on um, ABC TV in my household is when this would come on. Viewers are advised that the following program contains sex scenes, drug use, coarse language, violence, to which my mum would go, beauty, all right, let's do this. Kids, don't go to your rooms. This will be great. Stick around. Um, I grew up in a very great household. Uh, My mum is a very committed smoker. Uh, She used to light her cigarettes using our family toaster. Uh, So often that that's how I thought you conventionally lit cigarettes. So once I was at a friend's house and uh, her dad used a lighter. And I'm like, oh my God, Mr. Power, is your toaster broken? (laughs) Another thing I loved about watching TV with mum was that... um, when criminals would come on TV, on, on the news, and, they, and their faces would be pixelated, and my mum would be like, that is no barrier. What you've got to do, kids, is you've got to lean forward, squint your eyes, and you can tell who it is. <laughs> yeah, just do that. Squint your eyes. Right. <laughs> Which you could sort of, like, we all would do it, like, as a family, we'd be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why do we need to know? case it's neighbours. <laughs> I don't really think Harold and Mavis have been done for dealing pot, Mum. <laughs> um, which brings me to... <laughs> 
exactly a fucking thing up here. <laughs> uh, my mum's like such a great community member. She gets she gets really emotional at like anything and everything. And she just loves being involved in like community participation stuff, which is really admirable in some ways. Quite gets quite bizarre in others. Like um, I do remember really vividly we were um, she, mum would always say her favourite thing um, about Australia was this totally dubious statistic that Australians were more likely than anyone else in the world to apparently move out of the lane when an ambulance was coming. <laughs> I totally think she made it up. <laughs> like, it, who, who did that research? But anyway, she would say that and she'd like cry when she was talking about it. <laughs> Australians are more likely than anyone else in the world to move out of the lane when an ambulance or fire engine is coming. And I just love that about our community. And so one time, she just loved it. She wanted to be part of it. One time we were totally like lanes away and an ambulance was coming and she drove into the lane to get out of the lane. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, but Newcastle has a bit of a reputation for being quite parochial. And in, two, in 1997, the Newcastle Knights went into the grand final. Now, again, our family never, ever got into football. We hated it so much. But Mum saw this as a moment to be involved in the community. So what she did in our Pajero was cut out, like, life-sized faces of four of the most popular football players and, like, sticky tape them to our windows on each window, like we couldn't wind down the windows or anything, and we were like walking, we were driving around in this car that's got like four footballers faces stuck to the windows, and uh, when we'd stop at lights, mum would, mum, mum's heart would explode with pride when people would notice, and they'd be like, meh, that's cute, I don't know, that's kind of cute, and she'd go, now, do it. And all three kids would have to turn their face exactly face to face with the face and wave <laughs> at the car next to us. <laughs> so, good time. <laughs> um, uh, the best thing, though, obviously, like there's a lot of, um, but, you know, you can't complain about growing up in a family like that. I absolutely adore my mum. She's the best woman I know. I love her to pieces. Um, but when I was 14, I started wearing Doc Martens, so I knew something was up. I was a lesbian. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I had to tell my mum that. No, no, no matter how awesome anyone's parents are, there is an element of trepidation there. And I didn't know what could happen. I didn't know what her reaction would be. So one day when she gets home from work, I build up the courage and I say to mum, Mum, hope I don't become a statistic, but I'm a lesbian. And she just goes, without missing a beat, been there, done that. <laughs> Ding! That's a chaser. Been there, done that. You will have the time of your life. It's great. The shoes are comfortable. The lifestyle is great. The women are wonderful. Just... Throw caution to the wind, Hannah. Everyone, you've been so fabulous. Thank you for listening to my life story. Have a wonderful night. Please thank Hannah G.